Well, hello, church. Good morning. I'm Justin. I'm the student pastor here at our Poto campus, and I am filling in for Jason this morning. He's under the weather. He is on the men, so uh, he'll be back with us really soon. But uh, uh, excited to be here. Excited to be here in this series. I started this off with Admit, and so we're on number four on Never Be the Same. And uh, we're going to talk about what it means to follow Jesus this morning, to walk with Jesus. Um, many people I know do not want to be where they're at. They want to, you know, in, 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 in areas of their life, they want to improve, right? That's kind of common. We want to improve. And throughout this series, we've been talking about how to be transformed from the beginning. Admit you're a sinner and how to be transformed, right? How to be transformed. Um, step out of your denial. Admit that you're powerless over sin and brokenness. Trust God with your whole life and, 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 your, and, and your will, um, but, you know, it, it doesn't, it's not a one-time thing, right? It doesn't happen overnight. It's not a one-time thing. It's a, it's a process. Being transformed is a process. It's a lifelong process of turning away from sin and turning towards Jesus. Looking to him to save us, to lead us in that life that is abundant and everlasting. Let me say that again, abundant life in Christ. You know, it's not just about everlasting life when we're dead and we stop breathing physically. It's also, and that's awesome. Right, that's awesome. But it's also an amount of abundant life in Christ right now, today. Trusting him as the way, the truth, and the life. The Bible refers this pursuit of Jesus as a walk. Walking with Christ. Um, when I see former students from my times at First Baptist, they're in their mid-upper 20s now. Uh, the, one of the first things I, after, after the small talk, after the fluff, you know. How are you doing? How's the weather? Blah, blah, blah. Hey, how's your walk with Christ? I ask them. I, I want to know. I, I want to know. And ones that I see often, they know it's coming. And to the point where sometimes I see them like going a different direction when they see me. Like, oh, come here, dude. I know what you're doing. But ones that doesn't like see me super often, they're like, man, you're getting straight to the point. I'm like, yeah, I want to know how your walk with Christ is doing, right? And so um, have you ever, talking about walking, have you ever saw a and, I, and you have a toddler, a little kid, like learn to walk. Everybody, everybody seen that? It's so cute. It's so awesome. They go from on their backside to crawling around to walking. And as parents, you're like, you're so excited for that first step. And then you're like, oh man, they just took their first step. After the first initial awesomeness sinks in, you're like, man, we're going to get into everything in the house. We got to ch- change everything in the house, right? Um, a lot, of, a lot of not pretty at first, a lot of falls, a lot of bruises. Um, I have to say, he's here this service. My son, Grady, took his first steps at pretty much right at 12 months. It was, it was awesome, you know. But then something happened. Um, something happened. See, he, uh, he walked a few steps, and he fell. He got back up walked some more. But then he decided that wasn't for him. And the dude starts knee walking, Okay. You understand what I'm saying? Is, it, is, is anybody, the first service, no one raised their hand. Has anybody saw a kid knee walk? Okay, we got one. A couple? Okay, that's good. So two out of 400 and something. Okay. So, so it was a pretty rare deal. I mean, he was literally walking around on his knees. He had callus on his knees. He's like, what are you talking about? I'm talking on his knees. He didn't use his feet. They're behind him. He's on his knees like a catcher would be or something. And he is just scooting around on his knees. He did it from 12 months to 18 months. You know, as a dad, I'm, I'm starting to get a little worried, all right? I'm like, okay, um, this is not normal. It's, it was cute for the first day or two. It's not cute anymore. Dude needs to start walking, right? But after 18 months, he did, uh, he, he did figure it out. And, you know, and I, I don't know what it was. He didn't like to fall. You know, I guess that's a, when you're that tall and you fall, it's not much. But when you're on your knees and you fall, there's like, you're good. I mean, there's really nothing happening at all there. So he was super comfortable on his knees. But, you know, I guess, just think of a kid is like, is never like, it was totally scared. I mean, he, at least he walked on his knees, I guess, right? He stopped crawling. He's, knees, he's, he's a knee walker. But now, just think about if a kid like, does not, I'm not doing that. That, that, that fall, that, that, that hurt. I'm just, I'm content with crawling around. I'm not going to, I'm not going to walk. I'm good, right? Missed out on a lot, right? We would miss out if we decided, you know, at a young age, it's, it's difficult to walk. 
I can walk, but I choose not to. So I'm just going to not participate in that. Um, man, you'd miss out on a lot, wouldn't you? Kids would miss out on a, on a ton. Uh, you know, playing outside, running around, climbing trees, having a good old time, uh, playing sports. Uh, you'd probably get picked, probably get picked last uh, in, in kickball or dodgeball because you're that dude that in dodgeball this lays there and crawls around, easy target. So, I mean, it, it would be a difficult, difficult thing. So because you never learn to walk, you're easy prey. You're easy prey for someone something that wanted to harm you. Guys, in the same way, many believers in Jesus Christ never learn to walk. They miss out on the joys of walking with Christ and running the race that he's marked before you. Often feel isolated from other believers, feel like you've been carried all the time, likely to discouragement and to sin. Today I want to talk to you about learning to walk with Jesus. It's an imperfect process. You're going to stumble along the way. You're going to fall down. You'll find new joys in both in Christ and with other believers. Learn to live victoriously and run the race that Christ has marked before us. Turn to me to 1 John. This is an awesome text. 1 John literally could read this text and just leave. I mean, it's, it, it says it to us. Um, John the apostle who Jesus loved is going to begin pointing out two very important things about Jesus. We're going to read about it right here. We're going to read verse 1 in 1 John chapter 1. He says, That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we have looked upon and have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. Jesus was from the beginning. What does that mean? John clarifies this, cl- clarifies this in his gospel uh, in John chapter 1, verses 1 through 3. It says, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made. Jesus was God. In the beginning, he was God. Jesus is divine. He is God. Okay, that's the make no mistake about it. He's not created. He is the creator. He's all-knowing. He's all-powerful. He's sovereign to the universe, worthy of glory, honor, and praise. Glory, glory to God the Father in heaven. Jesus is God. So his divinity is the first thing we got to understand about this. this is, that's very important. Number two is his humanity. Look at verse 2 of 1 John. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it, and testify to it, and proclaim to you eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us. And look at in, in verse 1, he says, we've looked upon and have touched with their hands concerning the word of life. The word became flesh and dwelt among us. Jesus stepped down out of heaven, church, and took on flesh. Fully God, but also fully human. Philippians 2, verse 7 says, But he emptied himself by taking the form of a servant, being born in the likeness of man. Jesus emptied himself and took on the weakness and the limitations of a human. Hebrews, author of Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15 says, I love this verse. We do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has been tempted as we have been tempted. Yet, unlike us, he's without sin. So that which we have heard, that we have seen with our eyes, we have touched with our hands. I mean, John is passionate about this. Man, I've seen Jesus. I've walked with Jesus. I've touched him. That life was made manifest. God came in flesh and revealed himself to us. Listen, God became flesh and made his dwelling among us. And his invitation, church, wasn't merely to believe in the gospel, to believe in the death, burial, and resurrection, just not to just believe it, okay? His invitation over and over was to follow him. Jesus never said, come get saved. He said, follow me. Follow me. 
to walk as he walked, to live as he lived, to do what he had done. John, Gospel of John, chapter 14, verse 6, says, Jesus said to them, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. So we fall away, we walk in the truth, and we live the life. Look at verse uh, 3 and 4. That which we have seen and heard we proclaim also to you, so that you may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and his Son, Jesus Christ. And listen, we are, he's, writing, he's telling you why he's writing the letter. I'm writing these things that our joy may be complete. Man, John heard and seen and walked with Jesus. He knew him. He knew the depths of Jesus. He hung out with him day in, day out. Verse 3, we proclaim to you so that you too may have fellowship with us. He is saying, he's writing this letter to the Jewish people and saying, hey, I want you to know what I know. I want you to, to know Jesus. I want your soul to be saved. I, I, want to do, I want to have fellowship with you, with God the Father, the Son, and other believers, that together you may know the fullness of the joy and riches in Christ, that our joy may be complete. So what's he proclaiming to us? He tells us in verse 5, this is the message that we have heard from him and proclaim to you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. God is light and there's no darkness. And 275 times over, well over 275 times, uh, light is mentioned in the Bible to, to, to explain to us what it's like between Jesus and no Jesus, God and, 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 and not God in our life. If you guys ever went through a cave before, toured a cave, you know, they always do the same daggum thing. Every time I go, I'm, I'm usually ready for it. You know, they have the little lighting on the floor a little bit, maybe some above your head, and you're just in this little narrow part. And usually me, I'm, I'm doing this because I'm, I'm, I'm a little tall. And, um, but they always turn the lights out, Right? See how dark it is in there? You know it's dark in there. They don't need to do that, but they do it. I'm not a huge fan of that because um, every time, you know, it's cool for the first half a second because it's, it's dark. We don't know dark anymore, right, because we live with street lights and street lamps, and even out in the country, we got one out there in, in the pasture, and it, it shines in a little bit, and, you know, there's a full moon last night. I mean, so, you know, that's yeah, dark, but your eyes can adjust. Man, when you're in a cave, your eyes don't adjust right? And I do this every time I do this. And I'm like, I can't see it. It's right there, but I can't see it. So you kind of feel around. You're like, man, man, I'm feeling around a little bit. There's that, there's that cold, clammy wall. Yep. And I'm like, okay, y'all can turn them on now. You've proved your point, right? It's dark. You want to freak out a little bit, right? That's what John is saying apart from Christ we're in. Understand that. I think today we think of dark. We don't have a lot of dark. Man, that's apart from Christ. That's where you're at. You're, you're in just complete darkness. But Jesus is light, and he's perfect. Perfect. No darkness in him. He is the way. He's the truth. He's like, you will not find those things apart from Jesus. So how do we learn to walk as believers? Taking notes, number one, we fix our eyes on Jesus. We fix our eyes on him, on him. He is the way, the truth, and the life. But we often are tempted, even though we know better, to find some other truth, right? Some other, some other way. Even as believers, sometimes we, we, we want to go other directions a little bit. Um, there's other religions. I don't think anybody here is struggling with other religions that you're following. But there's other religions that, that, that does not teach Jesus was a good guy. He was, he was a smart guy. He was a philosopher. He was just a good person, moral guy. You know, Jesus is God, okay? He is the way, the truth, and the life. Super, uh, probably canceling thing to say today, right? You might, I might get canceled, but it's a truth, right? Jesus is God. He is the way. He's the only way. But sometimes we think, well, maybe I'm the source of truth. How am I feeling today? Right? I feel that's right feel like that's the way it should be. I feel like the Bible says this. If we, we pick and choose what we want to believe. True life is found in being you and being true to yourself. All that stuff sounds really cool, don't it? 
a lot, lot, lot of tiktok stuff going on there. I can watch TikTok and find a way I can go in life and direction I can go in life. Give yourself to your own perspectives and your own pleasures. The Bible's old and outdated and doesn't get our culture. Let me tell you something. You read the Bible, I'm, I'll just tell you something. P- people hadn't changed. We have not changed, right? We, we have not changed. Uh, they seek comfort and pleasure, money or success or beauty. All is fleeting. Money, not guaranteed it can go away tomorrow. Success, yeah, out the door you never know. Beauty we know doesn't last forever, right? We're all getting old and uglier. So John wants to be clear here, okay? It's all a lie. There's only one way. There's only one way. John wants to be clear. You learn to walk with Jesus and know fullness of life in him and him alone. Everything else. Everything else I just just mentioned and more will leave you in complete darkness. Cave darkness, guys. Cave darkness. Look at verse 6 with me. Verse 6 says, If we say we have fellowship with him while we walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. There's a warning here. If you claim to have fellowship with God, to have seen the light, but you walk in darkness, guys, this ain't falling down and stumbling and sin. This is a walk. It's a pattern here. If you claim to be a Christian, to, have to, to be a follower of Jesus, and you've constantly walked in darkness, you've never choose, chose to follow him, you, you're lying. There's so many of us, I've, I've encountered folks that, that get so confused about this. I don't know if it's because we live in the Bible Belt, um, but if you live a life of unrepented sin, you say you've accepted Christ, it, Man, I walked out 12 years old, 15 years old, 20 years old, 25 years old, but th- your life looks no different. Like you've never once pursued Christ and walked with Jesus. You're still in the darkness. There's no change there. The Bible says you'll know them by, your, by their fruits. You'll know yourself by your fruits, right? I mean, that's hard, hard truth, but it's so, it's so true. Man, that's not, that's not biblical. It's not biblical to say, yeah, I know Jesus, I, I, I believe in Jesus, but your life doesn't show it whatsoever, right? Sin will take you farther than you want to go and leave you longer than you want to stay, and it costs, it costs way more than you ever want to pay, guys. I'm going to say that again. Sin will take you farther than you ever want to go, leave you longer than you ever want to stay, and cost you far, far more than you ever want to pay. That's what walking in the darkness will do for you. The transition in verse 7. Look at verse 7 with me. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus, his son, cleanses us from all sin. If we walk in the light, he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another. And the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. So first thing we do, we fix our eyes on Jesus and him alone in the light. Number two, we follow him in faith. We follow him. We choose to follow him. Guys, this is simple, a, simply a life of obedience is what this is. Man, I, I, I want to obey and walk with Jesus. We live our lives, we ask over and over again, what does the Bible say about that? What does it say about that? What, what, how do I need to encounter this? What do I need to do about this? Um, we do as Jesus did. We love our enemies. We, we pray for those who persecute us. We share the gospel we share the, with people who are in need. We love them people that are kind of hard to love sometimes. We have fellowship with one another. Rather than being isolated in sin and darkness, we have fellowship in the light. I mean, that's what John yearned for, didn't he? I want to have fellowship. Unified by the gospel of Jesus Christ, we came together out of the darkness and into this marvelous light. There's a song, I think, like that. Right? Man. You're not alone. You're not alone. And here's something to challenge you by. You know, well, man, that's, how do I do that? If you want to learn to walk with God, just, just begin obeying what you already know. And you know. You know a little bit of it for sure. Start walking in that. Walk with Jesus. His Holy Spirit is within you if you're a believer and will empower you. Like that crazy mom and dad cheering you on as you first take your first step. Come to Jesus in prayer. Open up the Word. Begin to read 
to, give, to begin to serve, begin to share the gospel. Man, taking them first steps, right? Go back to walking, taking them first steps. Learn to walk with Jesus. So we fix our eyes upon Jesus, number one. Number two, we follow him in faith. And number three, when sin gets us down, we get back up again. When sin gets us down, we get back up again. Man, we don't let failures, we don't, let, we don't wallow in our failures. Verse 7 says, the blood of Jesus cleanses us from all sin. We just read it. It cleanses us from all sin. Um, he bore your sin. He took, upon, he took on all your sin. So you stop carrying it around, church. Let it go like, like, like luggage. Like when you walk in the hotel room, you're like, I'm tired of this. Boom, drop it, right? He cleanses us also in the present. The blood of Jesus of Christ keeps cleansing us as well. He knew every single sin you would ever commit. His blood is sufficient for you. I say this a lot during, I speak with students and even up here, uh, man, Jesus loves you. God loves you through Christ and through that, that sacrifice on the cross. When he looks at you as, as a believer this morning, when he looks upon you, he sees perfection. As a follower of Jesus this morning, he looks upon you and he sees perfection. You're like, well, Justin, man, I'm not perfect. Y'all know. But you're covered with the blood of Jesus, and that makes you white as snow. That makes you perfect. And you're his child. And that is why we get up, we fix our eyes on Jesus, and we choose to follow him. Look at verse 9. Verse 9 says, um, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. There's a warning in verse 8. Go back to verse 8 for me. If we say we have no sin and we deceive ourselves and the, the truth is not in us. What started off as lying to others has, has resulted to, to lying to ourselves as well. As well. Self-deceived. We can't see the truth anymore. We deceive others. We deceive ourselves. Verse 10 says this. If we say we have, no sin, we have not sinned, we make him a liar, and his word is not in us. So now what started off again by lying to ourselves has resulted in lying about God and his truth. We pretend to follow God, but we walk in sin and lie to those around us about his nature, about his character. Guys, it's a tragic witness. It's, it's, it's horrible for the kingdom of God. That we claim to be a Christian, and yet we're going to make mistakes, and the world needs to know that us believers are not perfect, and we need to repent from that and be honest about sin. But when you've constantly just walked in darkness and you've claimed to be a believer, man, that is, that's, that's very horrible for the kingdom of God. It destroys your witness. Where we are unchanged and unaffected by the gospel of Jesus. I don't know how you can be. I don't know if you've been callous by it, but when you hear the gospel, the good news of Jesus, when you hear Romans 5, 8, God demonstrates, shows his love for you that while you were still in sin, he died for you on the cross. Man, that ought to affect you. That ought to affect us, make us want to walk with Jesus, not just have a time where, man, I want to be a Christian. No, we, we choose to walk with him, follow him. Watch this video with me. Hi, my name is Terry Chitwood. I have the pleasure of serving in the re-engaged ministry and as a deacon in this church, and this is my story. I struggle with addiction to pornography and people pleasing, and that started early in this early when I was 12 it, um, and it haunted me for a good portion of my adult life it, um, it wasn't a constant thing it was on and off it, um, I knew that I had a relationship with Christ this addiction to pornography was just something that I couldn't couldn't let go it, um, not sure why but um, even through my marriage, it, uh, it kept, kept coming back around. And because of that, I would start managing 
how people see me and uh, making it the way they wanted me to be and what I should be and what, what I felt made them happy versus dealing with the real problem of, of pornography. And with that, I managed every single aspect of my life. What, what people saw, I needed to be funny, I needed to be, be liked by people. And as long as that was happening, then the addiction of pornography wasn't there. But the minute somebody was disappointed with me or I let somebody down, that was my, that was my go-to, my release instead of Christ. But then April 2019, I'd kind of just had enough. Um, and, and I knew I had to be transparent and clean with my wife, uh, with our community group, with the deacons, um, and with the staff of this church. And it, um, it was a tough process, but I also knew that as long, if it had cost me everything, I was gonna be right with Christ and, and then go from there. But when I confessed, my wife met me with love and grace. Um, Jason, in the same way, when I confessed to him the next morning. Um, talking with him, we, we worked out a plan that um, involved me confessing to my home group, the deacons, our re-engage group, um, the staff, and, and after that, we decided that uh, part of the reconciliation process was going to be go through recovery. And, and I went through it, but honestly, I was just checking the box because it was one of the things that I had to do. Uh, then I, got, I actually got into recovery and realized there was a freedom in it that that I'd been looking for. Found that being transparent and being open and being okay with with not being okay is okay. I mean, every every single person deals with something. And forever I thought I was dealing I was the only one dealing with these things. But when I confessed, it, it opened up people coming up to me saying, hey, I deal with the same thing. And, and those people now that have gone through recovery with me on that are some of my best friends and they know, they know me better than, than anything or than anybody. And I would tell somebody that was in my shoes to don't be afraid to step out into the light because there's healing and there's freedom there that you can't find chasing whatever it is you're chasing. That was the biggest worry that I had when, when I was living in, in, in fear of what people would think is, is I'm no longer going to be useful. But, but God's taken my brokenness and used it for his glory. Amen. Praise God. Man, thank you, Terry Chitwood, for sharing that. Um, there we go. If we, can, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. James 5, 16 says, Therefore confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has great power as it is working. Man, living in the light. I like living in the light. Terry Chitwood, thank you so much for sharing that. 
and, and he's living in the light. Praise God for that. Praise God for that. In closing today, I want to invite you to walk with Jesus. Simple. Walk with Jesus. Um, if you're here this morning and you've never done that, you know, maybe you, maybe you, you think you've been saved. I, I don't know. That's between you and God. But, man, you're just like, I don't know if I've ever walked with Jesus. And start doing that today. What are you waiting? It's not too late because you're breathing right now. Man, come on. Okay, come down and let, let's talk. I'm going to pray. I'll pray with you, pray for you. Uh, man, start walking with Christ. Get out of that dark cave. It's no place to be. I know it's no place to be. Maybe you're here this morning and you've never even made a decision for Jesus. Maybe not at all. Maybe you're here and you're like, man, I don't even know uh, much about this stuff. Man, I'd love to visit you about this. I just want to pray for us as, as we do this last song and, uh, and just, just encourage you to repent. Turn away from your sin and run towards Jesus. You know, Jesus would ask you this morning, he would say, man, come and follow me. And the Apostle Paul would ask you if you're in Christ. Um, sorry. It's super important. Um, we use terms about getting saved, and there's, and there's nothing wrong with that, but Jesus would say, you want to be born again? He would say, come and follow me. And that's what it looks like. Following Jesus. Let's pray. Thank you for your word this morning, Lord. Thank you for First John chapter 1. All 10 verses, Lord, we just thank you for that. It's just one of them. Just come read it and drop the mic and walk off, Lord. You are awesome. Thank you for the message. Hard truth this morning, Lord. It is so, so important to get. I pray everybody here gets it. I pray, Lord, that we all choose to follow you. Run after you. Walk as you walk. We're going to fall. We're going to stumble. We're going to make mistakes, but we are going the same direction you're going. And Lord, that's my prayer this morning. I know with this room this big, there's folks here that, that's not following you. It breaks my heart. So I pray that they get up and they walk up here and they choose to follow you. Or, or they at their seat, whatever, Lord, just, just get, with, get before they leave this room today. Lord, they choose to follow Jesus because everything else is dark and empty and a waste of daggum time. Lord, we love you. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.